Professor Gulna Aybet is head of international relations at Bahçe Shahir University in Istanbul and she joins me now via webcam. Welcome to World News Today. What in your view is Turkey's priority in this very challenging situation? Well, Turkey uh, uh, at the first instance wants to uh, secure its borders and does not want to uh, get involved uh, uh, as being the only coalition member with boots on the ground across the border uh, for a quick fix solution that at the moment doesn't have a very clear long-term coalition strategy or an exit strategy. Uh, therefore, I mean, rightly, they're saying that uh, they're looking at the situation very cautiously, and they've also called for the establishment of a no-fly zone and a buffer zone uh, for uh, a safe area so that refugees uh, who are already in Turkey can actually go back and um, be safely accommodated there, but also uh, to take care of people who are already stranded within Syria as well. And when you look at Turkey's own national security interests, is it right to say that Islamic State militants fighting against President Assad might be in Turkey's interests? Absolutely. But, I mean, Turkey doesn't want to put boots on the ground all by itself at the moment. I mean, and, and especially when there's no clear long-term strategy. That's why they've said that, I mean, the only way that they would probably get involved is if there is a coalition effort, of an international effort for a no-fly zone uh, that will protect the troops there and also the safe areas that uh, are to be established. But so far, there's been very little support. France has shown some support for the establishment of the, uh, the safe area. Uh, but the other allies, allies are approaching this uh, with caution. And the reason why Turkey said that we, I mean, if, we, if, we do, if they do get involved, uh, they would prefer to see the removal of the Assad regime and the arming of the uh, FSA, the Free Syrian Army, because they see that as the root cause of the problem. So they're trying to look at the long-term prospects there. But there's also another tricky problem there as well, because if you're going to establish uh, a buffer zone of any kind. Uh, Russia has already warned that it has to go through the UN. I personally can't see any other way uh, other than a UN authorized zone. And for that, in the short term, you would need uh, the approval of the Assad regime. So it really is a catch-22 situation. So you're making it very clear that there is no quick solution here. And given that, do you think the majority of Turks think if Kobani falls, so be it? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, there are lots of mixed feelings here. Um, people, uh, I mean, some of the Kurdish, uh, you know, there's been some uh, s trouble on the streets, and uh, the Kurdish population have felt very sensitive about this. But today, the um, the jailed uh, leader of the PKK has called for uh, the acceleration of the peace talks and calm, and the Kurdish political party have said they did ask people to demonstrate, but they're not for violence, because there's been looting as well and factions fighting. So I think we'll see a, a sort of, calming down and dying down of that situation. Uh, but it's wrong to say that people don't care. I mean, obviously, it is a very tragic humanitarian uh, situation evolving across the border. But that's precisely why Turkey has taken in so many refugees, much more than any of the European Union countries have done. So there's one and over one and a half million refugees already. And Turkey's been shouldering the social and economic burden for that themselves. But so they don't want to dragged into a quagmire and that's absolutely you know, that's so prof not professor i bet i'm not saying that the turks don't care about what's happening but it seems to me from what you're saying that they feel this is not necessarily our fight yeah, at the moment, yes, because um, uh, the, the, the foreign minister also said this um, about, about last week, that, you know, if we went across the border to help, you know, one peoples, then we'd have to do it for all of them. I mean, we saw similar things happening with the Yazidis, with, the, uh, with also um, the other populations in Iraq. And Turkey can't just, because they're the closest country, run across the border and save people every time. And it's very unrealistic to expect that. Uh, and also, especially especially as the situation is developing, uh, you've, you're seeing uh, new um, uh, conflicts emerging on, on the Lebanese border uh, with Hezbollah and Nusra. And, it, you know, nobody wants to get dragged into a quagmire at the moment. So um, I think that's precisely why Turkey's um, looking at this very cautiously. They have been urging for a no-fly zone and a safe pocket. And I think in the short term, that's the only thing that's going to maybe sort of try to alleviate the situation a little bit. But Professor as I Gulna, said, it hasn't had the support that it needs from the allies. Professor Gulna Ibeck, good to talk to you. Thank you for speaking to us from Istanbul. Thank you. Thank you.